All right. Well, um, I, we're recording and we're back in action. So um, I'd like Thanks, to introduce David. my uh, a, a colleague. I work on the Horizon Report over at uh, EduCause Learning Initiative with uh, Mahabali. I'm super excited too because we're continuing our international streak here. So <laughs> take it away. Can you make me host because I decided to do breakout rooms because there are more people than I thought. I'm sure you know what um, it's it's complicated. I can't do that and keep the recording going. So what? Tell me what you need for breakouts and I'll just do it. For okay, you. we'll make it work. Okay. Yep, yep. When we get there. Perfect. Awesome. And you don't, you haven't given me screen sharing, so you just need to give me that, please. You should have screen share. Not a host or a co host, so. Okay, no. listed as a co host. Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> I say, Salam alaikum, because people are always confused about good morning, good night, good evening, but Salam alaikum just says peace upon you, morning, night, hi, bye, works in all situations. So whether you're coming in or leaving, uh, this should work. I still can't share, David. There's two of How you. How are y'all feeling today? There is two of me. So the one that's talking, give the one that's talking. I have two computers on just in case one of them breaks down because that oh, has happened. Okay. Your other one is the co-host at the moment. Let me find oh. you. There we go. You're both co-hosts, both of you. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm playing tricks on you now. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone. I'm gonna to try to do this activity called TRIZ that's used for creative problem solving. It would usually take more time. So just keep in mind that this is a very condensed version of it, okay? Um, I'm at the American University in Cairo, but I also uh, have several open online learning communities virtually connecting in Equity Unbound. Um, I hope everyone in your family and your loved ones are safe and well. And so TRIZ is a liberating structure. If you've never heard of the liberating structures, you should check them out for sure, liberatingstructures.com. And there are ways of structuring conversations also playfully, but also equitably. And I think that's a really important thing, like trying to make sure that everyone participates equally, even if there are lots of hierarchies in the room. Works well for classes, works well for meetings. Um, my slides are available here and I'm just gonna put them in the chat if the chat decides to open, which it did, thank you. So you can use these again later if you need them. And I'm gonna skip through this whole part. Um, there's also a longer video of TRIZ if you wanna watch it being done on the community building resource that I keep sharing in the chat. Um, and so you can take a look at it again in more detail. For today, we're gonna to try to use TRIZ to stop counterproductive behaviors to make space for innovation. Um, and these are Russian words that I cannot pronounce, but it's about ingenious problem solving, okay? So the way we do it is instead of trying to solve our problem, we start with an anti-problem, and then we list behaviors that we would do to reliably generate this bad outcome. And then we try to see, do we actually do any of those things? And then we think about how are we gonna stop doing those things that are getting in our way, okay? Now, if you have any issues with the breakout rooms, you can request help and someone who's hosting will help you out. So don't worry about that part. So for example, I would assume, and this is slightly actually without knowing uh, works well with what Allison was talking about earlier. If one of the things we wanna do is reduce stress in the online learning experience for students so that the trauma doesn't stop them from learning, our anti-goal for today, if you all are okay with that, is to say, how can we ensure the most stressful online experience for students? It sounds counter, you know, counterintuitive to work that way, but it's gonna help you get more creative as you try to solve this problem. Um, and so what I'm gonna ask you to do, first of all, on your own, on a piece of paper, on a Google Doc, or just in your mind, make a list of behaviors, practices, or activities which would reliably achieve that anti goal. How can you ensure the most stressful online experience for students? Now go crazy, like think as extreme as possible. Like how would you make an online experience really stressful for students, but don't type it in the chat or anything. Keep it for yourself for now. And then we're gonna put you in breakout rooms. So I'm just gonna put a timer here for those two minutes to give you two minutes to think about it. And this is a really important part of um, liberating structures is giving people the alone time before you send them out to be spontaneous because sometimes people need to reflect on their own. Okay, two minutes, here we go. Okay, hopefully you've had enough time to do that. So what we're gonna do next, and I'm gonna ask, um, normally we do this in great breakout rooms of four, but there are too many people here to, to do it in, in groups of four. So I can handle about 20 breakout rooms. Uh, David, if you could do that and I'll tell people what they need to do in the breakout rooms. Um, so what we're gonna, wait, not now, not yet. <laughs> don't go to the breakout rooms yet. Don't send people, you send people, they don't know what to do yet. 
right, sorry about that. We're closing them. We'll reopen them. Okay. Okay, I think everyone's probably back by now. All right, so in the breakout rooms, I'm going to give you five minutes. Uh, and Dave, uh, I'll ask you, of course, to, to make sure that they stay for five minutes and come back right away. Um, I want you to type in a Google Doc and discuss with your team uh, the things that you think would create stressful learning, online learning experiences. And the way to find the Google Doc for your breakout room is to click this link that I just put in the chat. It has, um, it's a folder on Google Drive and there are different documents for each room. So if you open, when you're in the breakout room, you're gonna find out which room number you're in. And what you'll find is like, if you're in breakout room 17, for example, um, you're opening it and it's gonna tell you make a list of those behaviors and practices. That's just the first step. So we're gonna let you do that first step together in your breakout room. And then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna go really fast through the next two steps in this process. Now they can go to the breakout rooms. Just make sure that you have a link to this folder. Um, if you don't, just open a Google Doc somewhere else, I guess, and start typing in it. Okay, so just discuss with your group the behaviors that would create stressful online learning experiences for students, all right? Ready to go. Back a little early. Um, I'm just going to talk, if you're recording this anyway, I'm going to say one of the cool things about letting students do things in Google Docs while they're in breakout rooms is you can keep track sort of of what they're doing. And so like you can go into the folder and see, oh, well, this group, this is what they're writing. Um, you can take a look at one of the other groups and see this one, this group has not been writing. And you can go check in on them and say, are you guys okay? Are you able to use your room, you know? Um, so some students, well, there's a lot of people in the document, for example. Oh yeah, here they are. So they're saying things like three hours synchronous classes, broken things. So a lot of people are back. Welcome back everyone. <laughs> All right. I want to see the gallery view. All right. Welcome back everyone. So because our time is tight, normally we would have a lot of time to think through the next two steps, which are from the list. Which of those things are things that you actually do or people in your institution actually do? Because sometimes when we get together and make those lists, there'll be a couple of things I say are bad and I realize that I do them or someone else says it and I realize, oh my God, I do it. I can see people nodding, so that's good. Um, and so the second, that's the second step. We would normally think on our own and go back in groups, but we don't have time to do that today. And then the third step is what's one thing now that you've realized you're doing it, are you gonna stop doing? So what I think I'd like to do is just ask you to do that and type it in the chat. That might be a little bit quicker than going to breakout rooms. And I'm sorry that we, we didn't have time to, to go, you know, go to the breakout room several times. Um, but I hope that the conversations you just had for five minutes right now were helpful. Okay. So if anybody knows what it is that they'd like to change based on what they've now heard, um, let me know. Covering too much content too quickly leading to information overload, yes. The thing you're gonna do is create more plans for online learning being organized, adjust expectations, yes, Wendy. Have a backup plan if original plan goes wrong. That's so important, especially with online learning, but it's important anyway, I think. Like the whole COVID situation is all about these backup plans, plan B, plan C, plan D. Um, yeah. Um, Teresa, what do you mean that some people put these things in their syllabi, like the bad things that we're talking about that, that cause stress, they put them in the syllabus, so they, they pre-stress? Yeah. Okay. Like no late work accepted, or if you uh, are going to be late to class, don't show up, yeah, things like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I had like the complete opposite of, you know, don't worry if there's something wrong, come and tell me, and I'm never going to ask you to turn your camera on without letting you know why, and like... <laughs> And some people have the complete opposite, I agree. It's like, how can you believe that life doesn't happen? So. I feel like a lot of those are part of that hidden curriculum that we talk about, you know? Oh the, yeah, for sure. The, this camera on thing, like it ha it's borderline surveillance, you know, in some ways, like trying to, and, but then a lot of people do it out of care. Like they just want to see their students and get to know them, but it's just, it's a forceful way to get to know someone. 
Well, and I think part of it too is if you're talking with someone, you want to see who you're talking to, or if they're talking yeah. to you, you want to see. It's like that that natural connection to see facial cues and and movement and whatnot. And when you have are staring at you know 16 boxes that are all dark, it's kind of like, am I just speaking to the void? It's yeah, like, yeah. I've asked my students to put their profile pictures. So that I know what they look like. I'm not yeah. seeing them nodding all the time, but I, I know what they look like. And as long as they're talking to me, because what if they had all their cameras on, but they're not talking or that the camera on made them more stressed so that they wouldn't talk, which some of them told me is the case. Um, one of the things that happens though, and this might be happening to you, you get fatigued from seeing your own self all the time. And did you know that you can hide your own view so you don't see yourself, but everyone else sees you? It could get tricky, like something could happen behind you that you don't want to show on camera, but sometimes I really don't want to look at myself anymore. So um, that's an awesome tip. I didn't know that. That's that's yeah, where I often just from right. the three little dots on Zoom. Um, yeah. Hide self view is the last thing if, if any of you want to try that. But then to get it back on is a bit tricky. You have to go to your <laughs> video settings. Yeah, because you're not there anymore. <laughs> but you go to the video settings, and I think it's you have to go inside and find it. <laughs> Um, yeah, get motion sickness from looking at yourself. I think so. Like, so who sits watching themselves in the mirror all day? It's awful. <laughs> um, there's a lot of really useful things that people are saying here. Um, yeah, some schools do require cameras on. I can understand. It's just not comfortable for all students for various reasons. Yeah, this one's nice. Like, asking them to turn camera on just for you for a meeting and a one-on-one -on -one meeting versus letting the entire class makes sense. So um, I'm going to stop here to give you a minute to just think about this activity. Would you ever use it in a class or in a meeting? I've used it in my class to discuss sexual harassment issues. This was like a very sensitive, of course, topic to talk about with, especially in my culture, right? Um, with my undergraduate students. Um, but instead of just telling them like, how do you think this problem should be solved on campus? I said, you know, we went through TRIZ and like, how would you encourage sexual harassment? And they came up with some really good ideas. And actually some of the things are actually things that happen. So they say like, you know, when cases, when they turn out, when students have cases, they deal with them. But when faculty have cases, they're not well dealt with. They, they came up with some really good solutions. So how, how might you use this uh, activity in your class? Worst idea ever, I like that. Okay, <laughs> I like it so much. I don't I know like if we can saying. speak. Go, go ahead, Natasha, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, I wanted to say I do this activity on therapeutic communication. So like how to speak to people appropriately. So I was thinking I can do something like what are some things you should never do when communicating? you know, like cutting people off and all these things, and then evaluate how often you do these things. So that's interesting. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. I think time is up, right? I don't want to take up time from someone else's uh, session. Yeah. Thank you all for joining. A sports whistle or something. Well, first of all, thank you so much for that, that presentation. And I love the lateral thinking and, and getting people away from there's a right answer. And it's, it's a great technique. And um. Again, I think if you want to, uh, again, put your resources in the, in the chat, I think it's really important that people look at the liberating structures and learn more about the work you've been doing.